Welcome to the joy of coding. Hello, and welcome to episode 163 of the joy of coding. My name is Mike Conley. We're going to be hacking on Firefoxy things today. Um, thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for joining me. Let's let's get started. So one thing to point out right away is that last week, uh, our, the episode was not amazing. There was a lot of choppy lag. Um, the the stream was really choppy. The recording was really choppy, and I don't think it ended very well. Like it was just the last two episodes have been pretty rough actually. And last week, the one thing I tried was uh, moving OBS over to a different machine and then using a, a capture device here to capture the HDMI output from my laptop. And that worked okay, but it wasn't amazing. And I think that's because the machine I was using wasn't powerful enough. So I'm still on the hunt for a better machine. I've got my eye on one right over here, but I don't have admin rights on it, so I can't put OBS on it. So I have to, I'm gonna see if I can uh, convince someone to let me have admin rights on that machine. So uh, maybe that'll be ready for next week. Uh, what are we doing today? So today is January 23rd, 2019. A reminder, no plan survives breakfast. I don't know what's gonna happen today. I don't know if the stream's gonna go well. I don't know if I'm gonna be on camera. I, I keep falling out of frame. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to solve anything. Who knows what's gonna happen today? Uh, I have a vague plan of the sort of stuff I wanna cover, but uh, if things don't go according to plan, that's fine. None of this is prescripted. I also wanna point out that the agenda that we're looking at is something you have access to. If you're watching this on uh, Air Mozilla, check out the handout section over to my... That, that way, that way. Your right, my left. If you're watching this on YouTube, check the video description. And if you're watching this on Twitch, here's the agenda. I'm putting it in the Twitch chat. There's also a link in there to rate the episode after you are done viewing it and let me know what you thought. I read all the feedback that comes in. I also want to uh, give a shout out to the episode guide, the viewer driven episode guide that we've got here. We've got up to episode 161. We might actually have a couple of episodes waiting. Uh, I'll do the weekly check here. Yeah, there's a pull request for last week's episode 162 from Smurf D. Uh, let's quickly check to see what he brought in. He, uh, he's added 162 here, and then he brings in the links for the Air Mozilla event, the Evernote for the agenda. Um, let's see, that all looks fine to me. Whoopsie daisy. Uh, we can probably get rid of the Happy New Year now, but uh, But uh, let's not worry about it. Chat the dog thing. Power of stream. I'll run backups in the background. Yeah, that's the other thing I found out is that last week I had um, my uh, crash recovery software running in the background, and that was also not doing a great job of keeping my machine happy. Um, or sorry, no. Um, was it last week? I guess it doesn't. It didn't really matter if my crash recovery. I keep thinking that the OBS was running on my laptop, but it wasn't. It was running on a different machine, so it doesn't matter. Oh, the reason uh, the crash recovery software matters is because I was trying to build at the same time that the crash recovery software was running, and that's why the builds were so slow. Um, so thankfully I have uh, uh, Rupadu. Thankfully I have not, uh, uh, I've disabled the, the crash recovery software uh, for today anyways. So I am actually going to merge this pull request. The Happy New Year's fine. Uh, let's just uh, avoid it for next time. Actually, I'll comment uh, on that. Uh, thanks for doing this for the next one. Oh, have I been saying Happy New Year every week? No, I don't think so. Did I say it last year or last week? No, I didn't. Um, for the next a few, I guess we can, I think we can drop Happy New Year. Um, so I'm just going to do that and then let us merge, 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 merge. What am I doing here? Files change conversation. That's what I want to do. Merge, confirm, merge. 
It's oh, it's too late, Smurf D. He said he'd remove it, but I've already I've already done it. I've already merged it. Um, so don't worry about it. But just for next time. Uh, let's see. So that's the episode guide out of the way. So yeah, go check that out. If you've got your own notes, if you've got things that you want to add to the episode guide, send me a pull request. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, in the agenda there are links to what a pull request is, a link to the repository, a contributing guide that will walk you through contributing things. Uh, so let's get going. Um, Self-check. Everything working? I don't know. The, la the tablet that I have uh, Wacky Morning DJ running on keeps going to sleep, but otherwise sounds appear to be working. I'm not doing the new setup today. Um, yeah, this bounced, and I'd like to figure out why. So that's one thing we could do today. Um, this one actually uh, have a solution for. Figured this one out. Check out. Uh, the comment over here. Check out this comment. And that's just waiting on, I, I figured that out one out this morning and uh, I'm just waiting for a try build to come back green. So maybe check on the try build before the end of the episode to see how it did and if it went well, then maybe we can push that up for review. Uh, this one I think maybe we might want to look at today. Uh, it's, I think we'd looked at it uh, either last week or the week before. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. Yeah, that bounced. I'd like to figure out why. Um, I think I did a build on, on WAC. Uh, on beast mode and it's ready to go. So we can figure that one out later, but first let's start with this one. Okay, let's do it. So in this bug, uh, we we kind of poked at it a couple of episodes ago, but effectively um, this is a like a remoteness switching bug where when we attempt to, when we, here I'll, I'll show you the, the symptoms. Look a little faster. All right. I'll show you the symptoms. Just in case you weren't around for whenever we worked on it last. Okay. Whoops. So let's uh, let's say we've got the CBC open here in this one tab. And it's loaded, and then I like type some stuff here into the URL bar, and then I hit the home button. The URL bar is supposed to get cleared, but it doesn't. It gets cleared if I hit the home button again, but it didn't get cleared that first time. And the reason it's not getting cleared, I, I realized is, um, like I, I had, I've added some logging, and there's this thing on browsers called um, this URL, no, was it, has, did start loading since last user typing, is that what it's called? There's this object on each browser. Um, browser custom element. This thing, oh, the URL bar change tracker, and it, is expecting that when a load starts that we set this boolean to true. And for some reason that load, that started load isn't being set to true. And I've tracked it down to basically a big circle because I think we were looking at this code um, at the very beginning of the last time we looked at this bug. But then we went on a big uh, sojourn around and uh, and let me close a bunch of these files actually just to don't save, 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 don't save. Okay. Um, let us now uh, I'm gonna close even more of these. Don't save, don't save, don't save, don't save. 
And instead, we're going to open up one file in particular. We're going to open up tab browser.js. And in particular, this is where the problem is. And it took me a while to, to dig into it, but effectively, I added a bunch of logging. I can get rid of that now. After we do a remoteness flip, we enter this. Uh, we enter this state start. It's for initial without blank. Maybe I. Okay, so we enter this state start and or on state change after the remoteness flip because we're loading about home having transitioned from in our previous example CBC and uh, MCI or says every each time I try to watch the live hacking stream on YouTube for past few months I tried a few times the stream drops connection after 10 to 20 minutes it starts buffering I have to click li live to continue watching doesn't happen on any other stream I watch. Huh. I wonder if that's because of the um, the repeater that I'm using now with Air Mozilla 2. Let me just quickly check the stream health on Air Mozilla 2. Let me just pull that off to a different screen. Stream health is green. Seems okay. So you're getting packets over there. And if I take a look at how many people are watching, three, three people are watching, and the stream health is good. So hopefully it doesn't drop off MCI. -er. Uh, where was I? So we enter on state change whenever we transition from about blank, which is what the, uh, after a remoteness flip, that's uh, what we start with. And then we're going to about home. So it's like CBC, remoteness flip, about blank, going to um, about home. And so we skip this block um, because one of these values ends up being true, and, uh, or all of these values end up being true. Um, is that how it works? Let me just quickly check the log. It's like true, 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 true. Yeah, because all four terms are true, that returns true. And so uh, we don't enter this block. But if one of them returns false, then we say we started the load. And in the good case, we enter this block. And the reason that it's return, they're all returning true, or the one that's different is this last term. And it's because the current URI spec is about blank because we had, we had done a remoteness slip. So I want to quickly try and understand this comment here because I think this comment is going to be a big part of like understanding exactly why all these choices are being made is going to help me figure out what's going on and, and the right solution. Indicating that we started a load will allow the location bar to be cleared when the load finishes, and that's what we want. So this will do. This is the point where we're saying, "Hey, yep, we started a load. Let's clear the URL bar." In order to not overwrite user type content, we avoid it in a very specific case. So I want to understand these points where we avoid it because we're avoiding it in the remoteness flipping case as well. Um, having clicked the reload reload button. If the load is of an initial page uh, and was not explicitly typed in the location bar by the user, um, is not about blank, because about blank can be loaded by websites under the principle, and the current page in the browser is about blank, 
in King is a newly created or recreated browser, then we avoid overwriting. So they're all true. And in the, the good case, the current URI is about home and not about blank. Initial page loaded from URL bar. What is this? I want to understand what this thing is too. So when we ask the UR if the URL bar is asked, hey, load this URL. That is true. So I'm, I'm trying to understand how we can enter here. I want to enter here in the case that the user has clicked on reload. Or not reload, the home button. So they've caused a navigation to occur in the parent process by clicking the browser go home button. Or go home. Browser home. And how what does it do? What does browser home do? going to load one or more URIs to at the home page by saying hey load tab so is there another thing that I could like make false in here that makes sense Fiddling with the initial page load from the URL bar does not uh, make sense, I don't think. So I think we can. Uh... Well, is that true? Why is this added? Load URL. What added this? Let's take a quick peek at the patch that was written here. Stop races. Oh, we already had, we always had initial page loaded from URL bar. So, what about before? Or maybe it's easier to. Use search fox to do this. One off searches.
here. Fix the URL bar state when loading about home. URL stays in the location bar when I open the home page. That seems relevant. Open Australis menu, click Options, Toolbar button, wait until Preferences page loads, click Home, Toolbar button, About Preferences stays in the URL bar, URL bar should disappear. So this sounds really familiar, or really related. As we load about home, the Concross doesn't have enough other remote content process pages though, so there's something fishy going on. I want to look more at these patches. What did he do? Fix your all bar state when loading about home after about preferences. Is that we start sending remoteness update state around? Continue operation. The initial page loaded from URL bar equals URL. So what does the test do? It loads about home directly from an about new tab page. Because it is an initial page, we need to treat this specially if the user actually loads a page of this from the URL bar. So it switches the tabs, it opens a new tab, um, the URL bar should be empty, set to about home, we hit return, the URL bar should be empty. pages hmm that home briefly appearing when loading Is no principle. Hmm. Do we still have that somewhere? I'll look at that in context. Tab tag should be considered empty like result of a blank new tab.
Very interesting. So that sounds super related. And it's probably also the case that any time we did a process flip, this was going to happen. created browser original location so we have these are false and what are they in the in the different terms current URI is about blank initial page loaded is undefined Locations I think about blank. Current URI is about blank. I feel like it's something about this. Like I want to know more about maybe I should look at these tests more closely to see exactly what was being tested here. Test what happens if loading a URL that should clear the location bar after a parent process URL. So what it does is it creates a new tab about preferences. Waits for it to initialize. Clicks the home button. And then the URL bar should be empty. Same here. So this seems like a great place to put a new test. Let's see what those tests are like today. If loading a URL, it should clear the location bar after a parent process URL. So maybe we should start there. Let's start by adding a test. That's a useful use of time. Uh, so yeah, we got a bunch of logging in there we can keep. But otherwise, let's as legacy tests legacy. Are these all going to get ported? What's the why? What move? Split tests already passed with quantum bar. I see. So as they, as more and more pass, they'll probably end up moving them over. Port test to the new implementation. Got it. Okay. Okay. So we have a test here. Um, Do the same thing. Test what happens if loading should clear the location bar after a parent process URL. I want a 
type something into the URL bar. What's the best way to do that? can probably just like work this um, no no I'll, I'll, I'll have a new test here um, this string should get cleared and then let's assume that the user type value is not null const type value equals this typed value and then is user type value type value the browser should think that the user typed something into the URL bar okay and then we click on the home button and then let's see if only this test passes. And then maybe we can worry about deduplicating some of this stuff. The browser based content test URL bar. Test content. Actually, I think I should just be able to put in browser URL bar about home loading and it'll just find it. Ah, we have our failure. Oh. Because the user type value wasn't set properly. Is there something I need to do specially? User type value. I have to actually send a key event in, in order for the user type value to manifest. Here it's just being set manually. So maybe I'll just set it manually instead of doing this check. Uh, tab dot linked browser dot user typed value equals type.
Ooh, it's loud. Yay, the string should get cleared. Got, yeah, expected no. Good. Good, okay, so we have our failing test case. Now let's see if we can deduplicate some of this stuff. Um, how much of this is common? That's duplicated. What's this, what's the difference with this? Tab, tab, initialized, resolve, and then ask to load it. New tab browser. Oh, I see. So it's not exactly the same. I think I can like, um, I'll do it this way. I won't do it the exact same. I'll say, um, new, new, away browser test details with new tab. URL, we're gonna send it to HTTP example.com, which should work because of our proxy server and then browser that gets created. We're going to say that. And that. We're going to truncate, or not truncate really, just uh, lower the number of characters and then here and then we can get rid of that all right so that should also fail let us see meanwhile how's my processor doing sometimes I worry Fans are going crazy though. OBS doing its thing. Oh, shoot. I need uh, sync. Function. Good news is that Firefox Nightly is not in that list. It's not even in the top. It's like way down here. That's really nice. My Firefox Nightly is behaving very nicely. Everything else is taking huge amounts of my processing power. OK, good, uh, except that tab is not defined. That's right. I didn't do that correctly. What? Uh, I can just say browser, not tab. Here, browser. Okay. Oops. Let's 
take a look. It's in a book. Live hacking. Smurf D asks MC Iyer, yo, have you tried watching on Twitch? Because I have had issues with YouTube as well. And MC Iyer says, no, I haven't, Smurf D. So if you're having trouble with the stream, Smurf D recommends Twitch. And that's why I multicast. Good, 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 good. So we have our failing test. That's what we want. We have a bunch of other tests in here that we can ensure uh, stay uh, stay working properly. And now we need to find a way of entering this block in this bad case. Avoid it in a very specific case. The case is that the load is of an initial page and was not explicitly typed in the URL bar by the user. It's not explicitly typed in the location bar by the user. I mean, clicking the home button is kind of like explicitly typing in the URL bar by the user. So maybe that is a solution here. What was the original location spec? Original location, did I ever log it? No, so I can log it now. Else, dump, doing the bad thing. And original, location spec So we have our failure. Let's go back up and look through the log. Doing the bad thing, the original location spec is about blank. And then it was doing the bad thing again. Oh, and I think the second one is probably the one that we care about. So maybe I'll log one more thing. Dump, clicking, home button. Not to switch your focus, but the notes linking the agenda for 16th of January episode is not exactly correct, says Smurf D. Let's quickly go and take a look. 16th of January, the notes link for this bug. Notes link. You're right, it's not. So let me uh, get the notes corrected here. So 
let's go and alter today's. And last week's. All right, done and done. Synchronizing. Okay, so we have our failures again. Let's go back up. Clicking home button, doing the bad thing. Original location spec is about home. So one thing we could do as a potential solution is to set the initial home page loaded from URL bar to about home. in go home browser home um, Try here, G browser selected browser dot initial page loaded from URL bar. If home page G initial pages has home page. Is initial page if is initial page now let's see if our test passes I suspect it will I wonder if it'll break other things though this feels like uh, it's very like a house of cards not the television show on Netflix but like it feels fragile all of this feels very fragile. So that causes the test to pass. That's good. Let's see what it does to the other tests. Let's run all of them. So they all pass, that's good. So let's update the comment here. Test that if the home button is clicked while a user typed value, a user, after a user has typed some value into the URL bar that they, um, URL bar is cleared if the home page is one of the initial pages set. Now what happens if the home page is something else? Home page dot set. What if it's um, example.com, HTTPS example.com. What 
does the URL bar end up being in that case? I'm just curious. I think it's supposed to over like be the URL overall. Yeah, the URL bar gets uh, overwritten, so that's good. So I'm actually more confident in the uh, in this solution. we're going to load in the current tab um, we set the initial page loaded from URL bar if we're gonna load an initial page in the current tab as the home page, we set initial page load from URL bar so that the URL bar is cleared properly. Even during a remoteness flip. Okay, I wonder that might be our solution here. So let's see what Heist thinks about this. Let's take a, a look at our changes, push them up to try. Uh, I think we can get rid of that dump. Um, change, get rid of that, did start load since last user typing, okay, let us set up this patch, um, Ensure the URL bar gets cleared if home button sen it sends us to an initial page. I think that'll do it. Now that's the sort of thing I'd like to test on try. So we can push that up to try. Meanwhile, let's take a look at that other patch that's cooking cooking on try. This one. Oh, breakage all over the place. That's bad. What sort of failures are we talking about? Test timed out. Has timed out some timeouts. Interesting.
think the solution I maybe presented for that particular bug isn't going to work out. Hmm. Simple Cookie asks, what are you coding on? And with what tools? Angular? Uh, I am working on the Firefox web browser, and I'm writing it using Gecko and a bunch of, like, it's the the privileged JavaScript environment. So we have a bunch of different things that are available to us as front-end libraries. Parts of our browser UI use React, for example. Um, the new tab page, notably, in our dev tools are React-based. Um, but a lot of the front-end JavaScript uh, for the browser UI is actually just hand-rolled JS. <coughs> Excuse me. Pretty old school. But we're starting to transition to uh, web components. Uh, and custom elements, which is nice. Um, let's push this up to try. So I'm going to... Copy that. But I'm not going to do Talos builds. Push that up to try, and then maybe we can think about that uh, that other bug with promise document flushed and things failing strangely. Um, so this uh, try builds came back pretty orange. I think maybe that clever promise thing r swap thing I did might be broken but we'll need to, to check it out. Excuse me. It looks like it's most, well, no, there are some opt builds that are failing too. It is timed out. Browser window open is timing out a lot of these. That one timed out, I wonder, that one, um, if it's reliable, maybe we could debug that really quickly. Web UI. Hmm. OBS, 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 being slow. So I'm going to update to central, and I'm going to pull down this other patch. Meanwhile, let's hook into beast mode for that other um, work I was hoping to do. Um, Debug. Uh, I think I might need a debug build to do this properly. Build with debug. All right, let's do a debug build because I think I pulled recently, so we'll let that do its thing for a little while. Thankfully, it's on a different computer, so it's not going to impact the speed of this machine. Uh, OK. Let's also prune this old patch. We don't need this anymore. Um, 
so I should be on central now. If I look at it. Yep, okay. So now I'm gonna check out this patch. Mario! So one of the things I did with this patch that I'm pulling down that I should explain is I did this thing where like if uh, if the this uh, it's kind of hard to tell let me let me uh, show you. What's it called? URI to load promise. Returns this, so this function returns a promise sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it just returns null right away. Sometimes it returns some information. Sometimes it returns a promise. And I was making it so that once that promise resolves, subsequent calls to URI to load promise return the the result value that it brings in um, right here where it decides oh I'm now going to delete URI to load promise and we will turn it into a function that returns uh, this um, and that might be breaking us here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly build and I'm going to run one of these tests that is failing in automation. And we're gonna see if that uh, is reproducible here. One of the uh, tests that jumps out to me, there are a number that jump out as repeating, repeatedly failing on a bunch of these things, but browser window open is one of them. Pop-up UI, new content window from Chrome principal, that might be a good one to try. Just copy that to the clipboard. Browser window open. Yep. There's probably isolation. Okay, so let's look at this test first. So it's a nice and short test. I actually think I wrote it. So let's run that test and see what happens, see if we get our time out. What happened? Hey, what happened? What happened? What happened? You all? Test time's out. Great. Let's see what it's waiting for. Um, or let's actually, let's see what part of the patch is causing the failure. So I'm gonna go back into tab browser, set up initial Browser and tab. Promote type equals default. Promote type.
Smurf D goes, it's strange when the try marks the error as intermittent. Can you assume it is? Well, it really depends. Um, when we look at try, well, first of all, when I see a sea of orange like that, that's usually a bad sign. And it's it, it has noticed that there are intermittent failures that are similar to what's being reported. Like there is an intermittent opened on browser first party isolation, but the error message is different. This one's test timed out. This one's leaked one doc shell until shutdown. So because it's different, that makes me, that strengthens the case that what I'm seeing is something new and something that my patch caused. So that's, if you see an error message that looks exactly like what's coming out of, or what's been filed as an intermittent failure already, then what I normally do is I re-trigger the test to see if I can get it to pass. Um, and if it does pass in subsequent runs, then great. I've, I'm, it's just, an, well, not great. It's, an inter it's the intermittent failure. And if it fails constantly, that's also great because it means that I have probably uncovered a way of reproducing that failure reliably and maybe we can both fix the bug I'm working on and fix that intermittent failure at the same time. So this is what I was afraid of because this is kind of like the core of the um, of the solution that I posted to the, the bug. The bug that I'm working on here is uh, 1509250, which is a bug that a user experienced where after startup, if they restored their browser session, their last browser session manually, very early on during um, the um, browser startup uh, steps, then one of the, the initial tab, which gets moved to be the selected tab, is uh, not restored properly and it actually assumes the original home page. And this was kind of the core of my solution here and it appears to be causing all these timeouts. So I want to know more about these timeouts. So first of all, let's let's see what the uh, home page, our remote type is for home page. get some information. Yeah, my fans again. Oh, why'd this fail? Error version control conflict marker in file. Rut row. <laughs> That's not good. Do I have a bad merge? I do have a bad merge. Okay, so let me merge properly here. Resolve mark DOM base as global window inner dot cpp continue a rebase that I guess was halfway done. So our test failed here and what happened? Remote type privilege for home page about home. And then this thing is like, wait for a new window, and I want you to go to example.com. Right, so there's a remoteness flip, because I'm going to example.com. I'm passing an argument. Wait for new window. Browser test utils.
Oh, because I'm doing content open example.com. And then we're waiting for the new window. Waiting for new window. Okay, got new window. Running content task inside content task. Meanwhile, over here, back at the ranch, build. Mamma mia! I don't think so! Oh, yeah. About home. And then we're waiting for the new window. We never get... Oh, wait for new window. What does it do? Wait for new window. DOM window open, and then we wait for, if there's a URL, we wait for DOM content loaded, and then we wait for delayed start finished. If we can't load the URL in the remote type, we wait for Zool frame loader created. Can't load URL in browser of type browser.remote type waiting for frame loader creation. Dump got frame loader creation. Now what? What is going on? Why all these failures? Warning, warning, warning. Warning, warning, warning. Note, note, note. Warning, warning, warning. Note, note, note. I'm looking for an error. Do you see an error? Let me know if you see an error. I cannot stand C++, uh, like the compilers. Aha! Here we go, error, no void, begin window move, membered. Error result, error. Haha, I think maybe I did a bad merge. No, this shouldn't be included. That's what's going on. Begin window move. Maybe that shouldn't even be there. Maybe that got removed before. Begin window move. So I am going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to use hg absorb. What? I don't have absorb. Extensions turn on absorb. 
What? I don't get absorbed? That's awful. My HG is out of date on beast mode. So instead, I'm going to, the reason I moved it off screen is because I didn't want you to accidentally see API keys in case inside my HGRC in case there are some in there. Because I've done that before. Um, what did I want to do? I'm going to shelve, I'm going to do this little dance. Boom. So that's going to take my changes, stash them, go back one commit, unstash my changes, commit, amend, and then evolve and rebase the other commit on top of this one. And then over here, this window opens, and where are we stuck? Waiting for new window. Waiting for frame loader creation. So it's waiting for a frame loader to be created. So here, the problem here is that the initial tab, the URI to load, So this isn't the problem, sorry. It's the other one over here. I think we're, we've been given, we have an opener and we're going to be sent to, to a URL. Arg. So many different cases, so many different ways a URL might be opened. Well, meanwhile, that's chugging along, that's nice. Thing is, I don't want the initial browser to go to about home uh, or to the privileged content process initially. That's a bad idea. <sighs> Set up initial browser and tab. And then how does it work whenever we ask for a provide window? Force. Man, how does this work again? So whenever content asks for a new window, we do provide window, receive, create window. Receive, create window and the content parent. And then what do we call into? Say that the new tab is a content opener. We say open new window, common create window. Hmm. Common 
create window here says scale window open location if we're opening a new tab do this stuff if we're opening a new window open window with tab parent open window with tab parent this says a Chrome window it's passing in the force now opener true and no otherwise take the opening tab parent all right that's good we're passing in the opening tab parent create Chrome window create Chrome window 2 Opening tab, switch parent. Tab, create a new Chrome window. Oh, here we go. Create a new content window. Opening tabs being passed, create top level window. Lots of plumbing. This all brings back memories. Uh, a opening tab, just create top window. Just do it. Opening tab is here. Is it used at all? Initialize. used elsewhere a opening tab we tell doc shell say that there's an opener aha uh -huh. And the new web show window that might be useful. Now, is this before or after we actually create the window though? Initialize, initialize, initialize. And private browsing. So that's good because I think we'll only run that JS I think we'll actually in, in do it here. We'll constrain to open our screen. Create headless widget. Otherwise create top level window. Set the widget listener. Then we'll set the opener here and then down at some point, yeah, here we I'm gonna say load a URI on that window. So F doc shell, MSI doc shell. Opener. Get opener. Is that that's only man? 
it's only from Opener browser. Opener. Opener for initial content browser. Is that value? Content browser. Set opener. Create a new content window. We set the opener here. Here's an opener. So why is there no opener for initial content browser? That should be true. Opener, a opener. Smurf D asks, what is it that we are looking for? Sorry, I'm not doing a good job of explaining. Uh, what am I trying to say here? Um, So the bug, the bug is that the original bug was because we were doing a process flip from the privileged content process to, um, or from a normal content process to a privileged content process because we default to the normal content process if we don't know what we're actually going to be loading in the initial tab. And then there's a delay, and then we load about home, and then we go, oh, let's do a process flip, because about home goes to the privileged content process, so we do a process flip. And that, as while you're doing that process flip, you can't, while you're in that window of restoring that tab, um, like setting up to go to uh, uh, about home, any kind of restoration fails, uh, or it fails for that tab that you're restoring. So I originally, my solution was, oh, well, let's optimistically assume that the initial browser, if we don't know where we're going, is going to be for the pro the process that um, the home page belongs to. And in the default case, that would be the privileged content process. So we avoid that process flip. And that fixed the issue for Alice, who originally reported the bug. But now in some of our tests, when content opens a new window, it's defaulting the initial browser to the privileged content process and then doing a process flip. And I think that's screwing things up. Um, because the process flip is occurring, but the, um, the, the test frame, like I'd want to avoid that process flip. I don't want to have that initial browser be set up to use the privileged content process until we're pretty sure we're going to need it. 
Um, and in the case where content is opening us to send us somewhere, and in the test case that we were looking at, it's like opening content.open and sending us to some URL. So it's got to be um, a content process, and we should know that. So I'm trying to figure out how to tell, how to detect that, that we were open from content. And it looks like there is supposed to be a way. If there is an opener, I think that's true. Let me let me just work my way backwards a little bit. Um, opener. Oh, that's not true. Because opener is if there is a parent process opener, like um, something else in the parent process has called window.open and um, is setting itself as like a parent of it, then it's an opener. Because then we get the doc shell. of the opener. We get the, the browsing context of the opener. I think. Opening tab. I think I might need to think about this more and maybe talk to some of the people from the DOM team about how best to solve this. But let's, before we go, let's take a look at our try build. So we've got one orange here, but this error message and this error message, they match. Those look like the same. So I have a feeling that this is just a typical intermittent BC10, but just in case, I will re trigger it. Oh man, I gotta log in. Thankfully, my SSO credentials are up to date, so I can just, whoop, excuse me. And I'll re trigger. And we'll find some other solution for this other thing, but at least I know what's broken. It's just a matter of finding out what the right solution is. SmurfD goes, What places would you see similar things happening? Is it just where you are looking? or other places as well. Maybe look at how it's solved there. This is pretty special. Window opening is pretty special. And I think there aren't, there are unfortunately a bunch of different cases with window opening. And there aren't, I might have to go through my notes on window opening because I helped implement, <laughs> clean some of this stuff up a while ago and find out what the best way is of laying the piping, like the plumbing, so that the, the window, when it's opening, can construct that initial browser um, more sanely, like, and know maybe not only what type of um, initial browser to create, but also maybe what, uh, what process, maybe if there's a frame loader it needs to, to clone, something along, along those lines. Um, let's see here. I believe there was a bug filed on that window open sane bug window sane open. I need to find where, let's see, where such and such came from. Where is it? Um, Let me 
to track this down because I think there's an associated bug. Yeah, this wasn't that long ago. And there was this other bug. Man, there was like, I think I need to t talk to Heiss. Um, but maybe I need to study, study this patch a bit more. This, did this land? This landed, but it was backed out from beta. And it was landed in central. So yeah, basically the stuff I'm looking at is the remnants of all of this, but I have a feeling it still would have been necessary. This was how long ago? November 26th, a couple months ago. All right, I need to study this more and probably talk to Heiss a little bit on how, um, how we should approach this. But I'm gonna end the stream here. Hey. Thank you so much for watching episode 163 of The Joy of Coding. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't do a very good job this week of like explaining what I was doing, I think. I, I kind of got lost in my own head. Um, but um, sometimes that happens. My brain is just a little tired. But hopefully I can build up my stamina again, and, uh, and next time I'll, have a, I'll do a better job. So uh, take care. I think I accidentally just shut down Wacky Morning DJ without... Uh, properly signing off so I'll trigger the sound effect for my machine. Take care. Bye bye. The joy of coding. See ya.